we get these dogs for a reason, right? And we want to let them be the dog that they want to be, but you control that. You sit. No. Can you look. Hey, eyes on me. Stop. Sit, sit, sit. Sit, 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 sit. Stay, stay, stay. And I'm like, they're like, hey, it's not working for me. You're saying the same thing. And I'm like, kinda. <laughs> We don't take Dove that many places, so we don't have that many concerns about him interacting with other people. And, you know, before we got him, we knew the breed, they're dominant, and we were told they don't like other male dogs, and you can't really put them together. We thought he'd be okay with our other dog because he grew up with him as a puppy. The other one is kind of, he thinks he's an alpha dog too. Okay. And for the most part, you know, when he was a lot smaller, the other dog would try to push him. I think he goes to you, not me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's my buddy now. And he would ignore the small one when okay. he like snapped back at him. We've had three or four occasions where, I don't know if he was tired, it was the end of his rope, and he wasn't patient enough, but the smaller one pushed back at him or looked at him wrong when he walked by him, and he just jumped on him. He didn't actually bite down on him, but they did like the showing their teeth and yeah, his that, size difference. I was he gonna had, say. Two weeks ago, he cut him on the head yeah. in the middle, of, and I had to bring him for stitches in the middle of the night, and my wife was not happy. Well, it seems to me that just by kind of observing him as he seems like a little insecure, yeah. like he's a little timid. Um, so it's interesting that the Yorkie gives this guy some pushback, probably doesn't work out for the Yorkie. So ultimate goal would be trying to figure out the best way to handle the situation with the other Yorkie and uh, overall just control in, in general and kind of filling in the, the blanks. Yeah. Okay, is yeah. there anything? I mean, I'd like to be comfortable taking him places and not worry about him reacting to other dogs. The last time when he jumped onto Finley, our other dog, he had been staring at my son's leftover food that he had left on the counter for like a half an hour. He was? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then Finley came trotting into the room quickly and ran right in front of him. So he was like locked onto something. Finley came in and then he was like, hey, get out of here. Yeah. Kind of startled type thing. Yeah. Okay. So I always tell people if you have a loaded gun or you have an aggressive dog or you have a tiger on a leash, control is the absolute necessary thing to be successful and to be safe and to be responsible. So this is a bigger dog. And regardless if he has behavioral problems, which honestly compared to how bad things could be, it's not really too much of a big deal compared to how it could be or how worse it could be. So right now we need to be working on control. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, you have this behavioral problem, what's the root of it? Let me see how your dog engages with you. Let me see how you work him around the room. You sit. No? You look. Hey, eyes on me. Stop. Wrong guy. <laughs> hey, in place? Place? Stop. Up. Come on. Up. Come on. Good boy. Stop. Come on. Up. Good boy. Come on. Up. 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 Oh boy, come on. He's like, where's no, no treats in your hand? I understand that we wanna work on the, the, the New Yorkie and things like that, but we wanna work on control because if, if I focused on the Yorkie stuff, there's so much in between stuff that has to happen first. Yeah. You know, I don't. I want to make sure that we go kind of soup to nuts on making sure that we get this big, suspicious dog under control. So I'm gonna work him with this. Come here, yes. It's a good boy. Do you have a heel command with him? No, we don't walk him. We have pretty good size okay. property, so okay. we just all go right. out and play ball. All right, so we want to start developing all of the leash skills. Yep. The leash skills are going to develop your relationship. It's going to develop your respect, your control. Just like with kids, it's like, hey, we live in the middle of nowhere, so our kids aren't going to really see anybody ever, so we're just going to let them do what they want. Like, we want to make sure that we have the control when we need it, and it all starts on the leash in the beginning. So I'm just going to warm them up a little bit, and just I'm using this leash pressure with the slip to, to help him through these situations. So here, he's like, I'm not working. Yeah. So what the slip does is it allows me to add pressure, and then hopefully he'll he'll move forward. Good boy. Duff, sit. Good sit. The small little picture, the micro is, we ask him to sit and he's doing it. The bigger picture is, is he can't just say, all right, I'm done. So that's why I'm working on this very basic duration. I'm standing right next to him. I'm just expecting him to sit until I release him, which would be the break, which we'll talk about in a minute, 
or until I put them into another behavior. So before, if you ask them to sit and he's like, yeah, I don't really want to, and he walks away, that's where you're gonna start getting insecurity. That's where you're gonna start getting stress and anxiety of like, nobody's in charge here. The heel command is going to be the dog at my left side at my heels. So I want him to walk nicely because again, like if you do wanna bring him out and enjoy him in public places or whatever, he's gotta know this stuff. Right. Cause you don't want him all over the place. Dove heel. Good heel, buddy. Good heel, come on. Good heel, nice job. Good, so with the heel, I'm not letting him go left to right, I'm just keeping him right at my left, and I'm using my leash pressure to kind of guide him of what I want him to do. Good boy, come on, heel. Good boy, heel, good. Sit, yes, good sit. So shoulders are straight, I'm gonna use my body to start moving him around. So left, left hand turn inside to him, Good heel, buddy. So if he does that, you just give him a little bit of pressure like you would a horse if they just started to be a little stubborn. Come on, let's go. Good heel, good heel. So right now we're working on very basic things. Heel, sit, stay, break. The break command is essentially releasing the dog. So just like when we ask him to heal, you gotta work. We need a release command to say, okay, now you can be a dog. And I'll show you how that works here in a second. So we should kind of show him the food, break. And sometimes we'll use a tug or a ball to make it a little bit more like clear. Yeah. Good job. Leave it. No, we get these dogs for a reason, right? And we want to let them be the dog that they want to be, but you control that. Right. If he's growling at somebody walking up to your vehicle or your house, you're not going to say anything. But if he's looking at somebody that isn't a threat, you want to say, what I just did is I meet, I'm very assertive. So when I see something, I'm immediately, something like that, I'm immediately gonna shut it down. It'll teach him when it's okay and appropriate to do that and when it's not. And with a dog like this, he's never gonna not want to do that. Yeah. It's protective, that's why they're bred. So when he looks at somebody and says, mm, and you're not okay with that, it would be leave it and then an immediate pop. Now in the future, you gotta make sure that you're on top of that because that growl could be towards the other dog. Yeah. It could be towards anybody, you know, a friend, yeah. a family member. But the most important thing is accountability. If you guys like this video and you wanna see the full version of this video, click the link below to join the official No Bad Dog Members Club. How often should I say? Good question. So when you ask him to heal and he does good, it would be good heal. It wouldn't be good boy because you're missing an opportunity to mark and capture what you're working on. Right. You wouldn't ask him to heal again because he's doing it. So. You say, you say his name, you ask him to heal. If he does good, you say good heal. And it would be every now and then. I wouldn't like overdo it. Now I just wanna hold this because this is new for him because typically he's like, time's up, I'm up. Right. So just make sure that you're prepared that if he does get up, you're just gonna give him some more pressure and you don't have to ask him because he's already in that behavior. So if he gets up out of his sit yeah, like sit. that, you give him a little sit. bit of pressure. Good. good sit. Good. And I wouldn't ask him to do it again. I would just immediately give him pressure. And again, he, like right now he's sharking you a little bit. He's like, hey man, where's my food? He's gonna switch positions. He's gonna push you. Yeah. So when he gets up again, it's, you don't you don't have to ask him to sit again. Yeah, sit. There, no. it's the pressure up. Yes, because you don't wanna get accustomed to, again, like here's, here's what I'm setting you up for him. What does the sit have anything to do with the Yorkie? Well, when you ask him to do something like leave it or come or go to your place when the, when there's a potential sticky situation, I'm setting you up right now to make sure you don't have to ask him three or four times to comply. Right. When you ask him to do something, it's just pressure if he doesn't. And then if he gets out of it and says, okay, I'm out of here, you give him pressure again. You don't have to then say it again. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Yeah. Break. Good boy. Good heel, buddy. Hey, you guys, we're doing a giveaway on the Tom Davis Dogger 280C on this video. All you have to do to enter to win is subscribe to my channel, turn on your notification, like this video, and leave a comment down below to enter to win. The place command is essentially gonna be a targeted area that you're gonna send the dog to. So this will be big for so many different reasons. You're eating dinner, you have friends over, you have family over. Once you start to integrate the other dog maybe back into the other side of the house, 
he can be into his place. It's just a targeted area that they have to stay at. So instead of putting them into the crate or the other room, you say, hey, I want you to go to your place, which you know, and I want you to hang out there until I release you. So I always start off with a leash and treats for the place. And what I do is I try to encourage the dog to go there without any physical pressure. I just try to lure them over. I know, mister. Dove place. Yes, good place. <laughs> good place, buddy. Knocked the treat right out of my hand. So basically what you're doing is it's kind of like a jackpot game is as soon as all fours get on there, you say yes and then you pay him. Break, good. And then you break him off. Place. Come on, Bubba. Place. One thing I do so is I'll tall. just, yeah, I'll flip this over and make it more comfortable with it. Break. Oh, good, good. Come on, bud. So like right now he's not in a heel. I'm just kind of, again, like what I talked about before is he's on his break, but it's, there's direction in the break. So I'm not telling him to do something. I'm just kind of like, hey, follow me for a second over here. Thank you very much. Good boy. Now I'm going to see how he does with just staying on there for a second. Good. And I'll let him know, hey man, four's on, the, four's on the bed. Something good happens. Good boy. Place. Yes, good place. So he can't get off until you put him into another behavior or you break him. Okay, break. Good job. Good man. Good man. Good job, bud. So as we progress with Dove and the owner, as you guys know, and as you guys can see a lot on this channel is it has nothing to do with the dog. It has everything to do with the owner and how they're handling these situations. So when we first started in the session during the day, in the morning, it was the dog couldn't sit, the dog couldn't walk, the dog was on a flat collar, there wasn't any control. Now, as you guys can see the progression just in this first day, we are walking past the other out-of-state dog, Molly. We are sitting without multiple sits, sit, 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 sits. We are now placing, which we just never had before. We are staying, which wasn't great before either. So I'm really hopeful for these guys. And more importantly, guys, like what I really love about this is I think it's gonna be really helpful for them in the future for the problems that they're having with the Yorkie, but I can just see this dog finally working, which is a working dog. I can see this dog finally looking at the owner with engagement and intention. And that's what I really care about is developing a better relationship. If we can tackle the behavior and the problem, which we normally do, awesome, I'm happy. But the bigger picture and what really warms my heart up is watching this dog finally look as, at his owner as the leader. And that's huge for these guys. I obviously don't have the control that I need to have with him. But yeah. I have 100 times more right. control than she does right. at this point. Right. So if I continue to do all the training with him and get him to a point where he's responsive to my commands. Will that translate to her telling him or yeah. will he only respect me in the house? It depends on how you do it. So here's, here's the real question is if it's same thing with me, right? So again, like people come from all over, you know, and I whip up a dog, boom, 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 boom. The dog is like, yes, sir. Cause I'm doing everything right. Right. I'm like, this is like, like your guys' job, whatever you guys would do. And you go in, I'm like, I could never do that. Like that looks crazy. Right. For me, it's, it's another day in paradise. Right. Bing, bing, bing. The dog's like, got it. So, Here's what I would do is I would say, heel, sit, stay, ah, ah, leave it, stay, okay, break. And then what some people do, right, is they take the leash and they go, heel, 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 sit, 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 stay, stay, stay. And I'm like, they're like, hey, it's not working for me, I'm saying the same thing. And I'm like, kinda. It's not necessarily what you say, it's how you say it with some dogs. Right. So he knows in your voice, your voice inflection, if you say sit versus sit, please sit. Yeah. He knows, he's like, you don't mean it as much for some reason. Yeah. And, and when I don't sit and you're like, I'm kind of nervous to correct them. He's like, Pfft. so anyway, my point is, is in theory, absolutely. But it's a lot like parenting, right? So if, if one parent says you lights out nine o'clock, no exceptions. And then the other parent comes in at 9.03 and we're still on the iPad or whatever. And you're like, buddy, listen, um, 9.20 and that's it. He's like, ah, I can get away with you. My point is, is there's some people in some relationships, whether it's kids, significant others, brothers, 
moms, dads living in the house, whatever. If the person who is having a hard time with the dog and controlling the dog isn't willing and able to do it, then there's, there's some times where it's just like, I, you might as well just, no training is better than bad training. You might as well just not do it because you're not, you're not like, this is, this is a top tier dog. And if you're used to not that, or you're not prepared or whatever, then it's going to, this is a tough dog to work with because they are smart, intelligent, stubborn, aggressive by nature, not in a bad way, but just pushy and physical. So you absolutely sh should and could be able to do the same thing. There's just, if you know, like in your head, you're like, I don't think I'm comfortable doing that, then it probably won't work out as good. Yep, keep going, keep walking, there you go. When he gives you that like feedback a little bit, it's important to use your momentum, just don't stop. People have a tendency that if a dog looks back to say, I wanna go over here instead, don't stop, you keep going. Don't give him that option. That was really good, really good. Okay. It just takes time. But when he starts to pull like towards something, like me or, or the door, and he's like, I'd rather do this, just slow down and give him some pressure, but don't let him cross your, le cross your leg because he has all the leverage when he does that. All right, you guys, we work really hard with full production, 4K videos, absolutely free for you guys. Do us a favor, No Bad Dog Army, like this video right now if you're watching it, and let's make this army even stronger than it is. main thing with him because the reactivity to the other dog is so inconsistent and not like happening every month or every day. Your goal with him is to make sure that you continue to control with him. Even if you came in and he didn't have any issues with the other dog, I would still be taking him extraordinarily serious because of his breed. Some people ask me like, how long should I be working him without throughout the day? 10 minute sessions break, 10 minute sessions break. Nothing like what you've seen here. The more mental work you do with him and the more work you do with him uh, as far as like getting him to work, the better. So yeah. fetch. So instead of us an hour breakfast, lunch, and dinner playing with him, yes. just chasing balls, we put in 20 minutes of working yep. or half an hour of working into there. That would benefit him more than running around. Yeah. So if you had a half an hour of play, 15 minutes ball, 15 minutes of training. Yeah. And it would be very basic things that we've already done. So it would be sitting, staying, thresholds the door that's huge and it's good for his obedience but it's the best for your relationship he needs to know it's not about oh, i'm in charge i'm alpha it has nothing to do with that him making decisions like that is a problem you have to just just like with kids yeah. you just you can't just do it what are you doing what, what, that you're that's dangerous you can't just go and do that same thing with him and the way they do that is what we've what we've gone over mm -hmm. 